Hi, everybody. Uh, I hope you all can see this. Uh, we're, we're still messing around with the, uh, the software here, but uh, I think it's working well. Uh, welcome to Solidus Community Day. Um, for those who, oh, great. Thanks, Peter. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Sean Denny. I'm one of the Solidus Council organizers and a uh, member of the Solidus Stakeholders Group. It's great to be here and see all of you. Um, I want to say first, thank you for joining us for this experimental event. Uh, after the talk, I'm going to be hanging out on the uh, Community Day meta table. I'd appreciate it if you could all swing by and give me some feedback on what you see here today. We might consider making this a monthly Solidus meetup. So if this is something you want to see more of, is this, this is content that you like, please let me know. And if you don't like it, please let me know as well. Uh, that's also helpful feedback. Um, I just want to do a brief introduction of the event. As you saw, there's a there's a number of tables that you can sit at. Uh, I've marked them up with topics of conversation, but please feel free to sit anywhere after the talk. Um, I think a lot of the fun of these types of events is the networking. So be social, turn your camera and mic on. Uh, this is community day, so we wanna hear from all of you. Uh, during the talk, you can submit questions in the Q&A tab. Uh, please feel free to post as many questions as you want. I know Peter would be happy to answer them. Uh, I also wanna give a quick shout out to Nebulab. Uh, my employer for sponsoring this event. It wouldn't be possible without their support. So I don't want to take up too much time. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Our speaker is Peter Berkenbosch, who has been a longtime supporter of Solidus, and uh, I'll let him take it from here. See you on the other side. Uh, let's see. There you are. Uh I needed to set up some stuff here. Okay. Is this visible for everybody? Am I loud and clear? Yeah, awesome. All right. Thanks. That's a good feedback. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give a short talk about the uh, Solidus Dev Support gem that's been out there for a while. And um, we're going to go over how to generate an extension, uh, what an extension is, um, and and then make a really small uh, contrived example based on on the Solidus Dev Support tools and, and configuration that we have. Um, so the first thing, oh, let me actually focus on the right screen. There we go. Um, so an extension um, in Solidus is basically a Rails engine that is packed into a gem. There's nothing really new about uh, extensions in the world of Rails and Ruby. Um, it's a Rails way of doing things. Um, but Solidus Dev Support try to follow that Rails idiom as well um, with same defaults and with uh, convention over configuration. So the next slides is basically the, the meat of everything. We're gonna go over and install Solidus Dev Support and generate an extension. Go over all the different uh, binaries that are generated, the different setups that you can do, and all the free goodies that you get out of the box when you generate a, a Solidus extension. So right now we're at version to uh, like one four. Um, and if you do a gem install Solidus Dev Support, it will be installed um, like so. And then after a successful install, yeah, there's a dog walking in here. Sorry, get a little distracted. It's all remote things. Um, so when you have that installed, you have a Solidus command uh, at your disposal. And the Solidus command itself does not do that much. Um, it's the extension uh, command within that executable that does that does the the magic. So let's let's assume we want to add sales price to to our products. Um, we can go and generate the extension by executing Solidus extension and then the name of our extension. Um, and the generator will prefix that name with Solidus. So to go do your development, get the CD into the Solidus sales price um, folder. And in that folder, everything is, is set up for you. Uh, the gems there, 
gem spec is there. Um, we'll go over that in a, in, a, in a second. So to get everything set up and running, you need to run bin setup. And if you do that without changing anything, there will be an error uh, since the gem spec that is generated has um, the standard bundler uh, to-do lines in there. So you have to remove the to-dos. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You will we'll see it in the, in the command line. Um, but if the bin setup is executed and you have everything installed, you can run your rake file. And the default rake file will run the specs. So without actually writing any code, um, we'll actually have 13 lines of line coverage already, uh, which is quite nice. You have no examples and no failures. So it didn't really test anything, but we'll have code coverage set up, our spec is set up, um, the right Solidus version is set up. Um, that's all from a few, a few seconds of, of gem install. So what is the boilerplate that we, that we generate for you? Um, the gem spec. The gem spec is, um, let me grab that real quick because I think I did not add a photo in there. Let me grab it here. I might just jump back and forth into a few of the source code examples because that says more. Um, I have to unshare screen and then share my other screen. This is not really. I'll just grab the window. Here we go. There we go. So what it does, we have the gem, we have a version for the specific, uh, the specific extension. This is what I changed, the summary and the description. That's where you get your to-dos. And the dependencies that we add is solid score. So it has to be bigger than two and smaller than three. Um, and then solid support. Uh, I won't go into much details in solid support, but it's a, it's a wrapper for version checking and migrations. And there's some, some additional, uh, additional tooling there. Uh, and then for the development, we need our Solidus dev support. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll just get this here. There we go. That works too. All right, so that's that's set up out of the box for you. We well, talked about RSpec already, um, and when you run it locally, it will just grab your your current setup. But there's also a really powerful, and um, I was amazed that I didn't notice this before. Um, the Circle CI config that's added is extremely powerful. There is a concept of orbs within Circle CI, where you can reuse test setups and, and configuration. And with this extension, we automatically out of the box have test support for all versions of Solidus that we support, um, including master and, and also a matrix testing around uh, MySQL and PostgreSQL. So for every version that we support, and for the database, uh, MySQL and PostgreSQL, you'll have a Circle CI setup that is up and running. Um, I have a sample. Oops, that went a little bit too fast. A sample here for um, the Solidus Affirm uh, V2, which is really, really powerful. So every week on Thursday, there will be a, a spec run done on all, all the different, um, all the different setups. So for every version with all the two databases. So if upstream solid is something breaking change uh, happens or um, it's breaking your particular extension, you will know it, uh, You will know on, on Thursday if that runs. And of course, you can also change that. So configuration, but everything is adaptable. Yeah, that's feasible. Right, so we let's say you want to do it every every Monday. Uh, I think that should be a one. Then um, I'm not too familiar with the cron setup, but that's really really powerful.
And another powerful thing that I like, uh, this is not what I wanted. Let me see if I can do that one more time. Yeah, there we go. Um, another thing that I really like about uh, Solidus Dev support is the sandbox. So in the past, and I think we actually have that in the in the guides as well. If you wanted to test your extension, you just install Solidus, set it up, add the extension to the gem file, to the local pad, run it, bundle it, install it, and then play around with your extension in that particular uh, Rails and, and Solidus install. But with Sandbox, we can create a local Sandbox in the extension that will set up uh, Solidus, uh, like a real application, install Solidus, install Solidus off device, and your extension runs all the migrations and makes sure that you have something that's up and running for testing your, yes, Ilya, perfect. That sandboxing is, is awesome. So if you run that, you'll get a message um, like this. And by default, we use uh, SQLite 3 and the main branch of Solidus. Um, and as you can see in the documentation, we can change what database adapter or what Solidus branch we want to run to uh, as well. So by default, we're running on, on master uh, and, and SQLite 3. But if you want to run on Postgres, we'll just export the DB and variable, set the Solidus branch, for example, to 8.5. We'll have to update the bundle, run the sandbox again, and then we're running on 2.8.5. So another interesting file is the Rails binary. Um, it's a little bit different than when you just generate an extension um, because we separate two different uh, functionality there. Um, and I'll jump back on that in a second. But by default, all the Rails commands are forwarded to your sandbox. And if there's no sandbox present, it will generate it for you. So in this case, if I did the bin rails server or bin rails s, it will start up my server. And if I open up my local host, we'll see the older images um, from 2.8.5. Uh, yeah, we, we changed that, uh, Taylor. I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. Um, so if we want to do the latest release. We can also set the branch to a um, uh, to a release or a tag even. So the latest release uh, two days ago uh, or three days ago is two ten one. So if we export the Solidus branch to that particular version and we bundle update, we run the sandbox. We get the same message also that we are on Solidus two ten. One now, and if we run the server again, we'll see the new images, the new setup. We're now actually running PostgreSQL on version four uh, uh, two ten one Solidus. So uh, I'll get back to that in a second. But the the Rails command, all everything is forwarded to. Uh, Rails sandbox if it's not generated. Otherwise, it will be forwarded to Rails engine um, or engine Rails, one of, one of the two. And so, yeah, you have some more binary files in the bin folder. But if you're uh, lazy as I am, or as Elliot was saying, and I totally 100% agree, um, I don't want to type that much. So, if you would just, you can use the Rails command to generate um, anything and all the generation will be done inside the extension. Every other command will be forwarded to, to the sandbox. All right, so how, how would, it, would that look? Um, we'll create a, a sales price. So the first step that I wanted to do is to generate a migration and to go back to what I just said, if I run this, uh, this command, just a regular generate migration as you're used to do with Rails, this will be executed within the extension. So in the file structure, you will have a DB migrate folder for your specific migration in the extension. So in this case, it's going to be really straightforward. And uh, 
if I would implement it, I would do it on the prices itself. But for this example, we'll just add a add a new field to to this pre variance table called sales price. Um, yeah, and this was a slide what I wanted to talk about the Rails generate uh, <laughs> command that I'll, I'll I just covered that. Um, so again, this will execute in your in your extension folder. And another important thing that we do um, and that makes Ruby really powerful, but also a little bit dangerous sometimes is decoration or monkey patching. Um, right now we call it a, a decorator that might change, um, but we need to decorate the product model to make sure that we use the sales price correctly. And although I just created a price field on the variant, all the pricing is done through the product. So we need to delegate the sales price to, uh, to the product like the the specific code here doesn't really is not really important. The important part is the namespacing on the top level uh, module. It's the best practice to encapsulate this in the model name of your extension. If you don't do that, for example, if we have two product decorators with the same path, the same name, um, the first one will only be loaded. So you will get some some nasty results there. So best practice is to have a top-level namespace that is your extension namespace, then call it uh, the product decorator or product extensions or whatever you want to want to call it. Um, although I take that back with site work, we have to get the file name correctly, um, and then prepend that particular code change to to in this case this pre-product. There's also a big chunk of test support available, which is really awesome. Um, I'm really happy that that's available for us to use. Um, so for example, this model spec for the product, for the field that I just added, I don't have to create any, any outside files or factories. In, in the spec helper, um, let me grab that because that might be a good one to show too. In the spec helper, we have our the coverage is added, um, but also we have our feature helper file here. And this loads all, all the stuff that we need to run uh, factories, feature specs. There's a pull request co coming up that will add system specs as well. And that gives us the opportunity to, is this a good window? No, this one, <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, so this gives us the opportunity to use, use the factories that are defined in Rails core, uh, sorry, in, in Solidus core. So we create a master variant, we set the sales price, we create a product as well. We'll just go through the variant there and then I'll just verify that the delegation worked. It's nothing, Nothing really special here, but um, it's really awesome that we have so much out of the box from from um, from Solidus Dev support. So the next step that I wanted to do is to deface the admin fuse. I have a love hate relationship with deface, um, and I will not use it anywhere else than on this particular specific point. Just add a little field here and there. I don't want to override the complete view for this, um, but opinions may differ. Um, it's a little bit back and forth now and then. So oh, it doesn't look nice now. Good thing I'll have it actually in code as well. So you have an overrides folder where I just create an override for deface. Um, you can also do like a nested path that you have overrides pre admin products underscore form slash and then whatever the override name is. Um, for these kind of small things, I kind of like this better. It's a little bit more readable. Um, I don't go into details of deface, but what this basically does is grab a certain HTML attribute and then add in a, uh, a partial at the top of that particular attribute. Now that I have it here too, I can might as well show the whole thing. Um, and this is what we add. We just add a field container for the sales price. We'll put the sales price up there. 
uh, so people can can add it in admin. Yeah, there you go. That's the that image came out better than the previous one. So now when we run the server again, and we go into the admin. Um, oh yeah, by the way, the sandbox has the default admin installed as well. It's admin at example.com and then test one, two, three. Uh, it's all documented as well, but just so you know uh, here too. So right now we have the sales price here. It's just a field, doesn't do, doesn't do that much. Um, the red label there is because we don't have a translation file for it. Uh, we need to do that in the I want 81 folder. Um, and for this example, I, I just I just skipped it. So we can change that, add a price there, save it, and then we have a the next challenge. Um, I usually don't do this. Um, most of the front ends are being rewritten anyways. Um, so either upgrade the helpers, give an helper available for people to join to add in in their own front end, or if it's not available, look for an extension point in the configuration to, to make that happen. Um, but for the sake of this argument, uh, I wanted to show another generator that's available. Um, you can only do that when you have your Solidus front end present locally too. So if you wanna do this command in your extension, you'll have to add the dependency to, to, to Solidus front end, otherwise you'll get an exception. So what this thing, this command will do is it will grab the products, uh, the, the, the card form partial from the products folder out of the front end product, uh, front end extension, and then copies that into your product. So it will be app fuse, uh, spree products, underscore card form dot HTML dot ERB. So you can overwrite that file. Um, and I, like I said before, I will not uh, never ever use DFACE for that. Um, Maybe a little bit strong opinion, but I, I'll but just don't. Um, this gives you the opportunity to go into the code and add, these things are not really nicely put, but anyways, you can see it here. So what I'll add it, I added just a little snippet next to the price um, that if there is a sales price present, uh, we're gonna get some strong notification there and say, well, it's it's available now for this amount. Um, and also note there is display for or display money, um, helpers in models available as well. I just went with the spree money new. Um, there's a there's a better way of doing this. Just don't copy, copy this directly. Um, and then if I refresh the page, we'll see that uh, I made a small typo on the on the promotion. This is the best promotion for uh, <laughs> nobody want to buy that. Um, yeah, it's a good deal. Uh, had to be 25. Anyways, the, um, that's the gist. Uh, that's the gist of it. Um, I was planning on going into some feature specs. Uh, I ran out of time a little bit today, but there's feature specs available that can you you can log in as an admin and check these things as well, just like a regular Rails, just like a regular Rails extension. Uh, I might follow up with a blog post around this and, and dive in there a little bit. Um, yeah, I think this is most of what I wanted to share about building this extension. I wanted to share a few resources that are uh, really good for looking at extensions, um, but also finding sample extensions or inspiration for your own extension if the extensions out there are doing too little or too much or something else. Um, I'll highly recommend forking and, and and do help help people developing their extension, but you can you can find them out there. Um, so you have Solidus Dev Support is on the Solus IO main organization. Um, there's a part on the guides, probably rewrite that a little bit uh, in the future. There's also an awesome site that hasn't gotten enough attention, I think, because I rarely see people talk about it, um, is Soliton. 
Uh, it's built by Nebulab and it searches GitHub for uh, Solidus extensions. It's really good. Um, I kind of like to use that to see if something's out there or when I need uh, need inspiration or find find extensions. Um, you can also go to the Solidus IO Contrib uh, organization. Uh, those extensions are all third party but supported extensions. That's the that's the plan. At least, um, yeah, uh, that's all I had. I see one QA thing popping up. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. No, so you can also just run bundle exec uh, rspec and then your file that will that will load. The rake command just runs the uh, the main rspec file, the main rspec by itself. Uh, and I think it checks for sandbox presence. Um, so if there's no, uh, or not, sorry, not sandbox, uh, dummy, the dummy Rails app. But yeah, you can run a single spec, uh, just like any any file. So the R spec spec, my spec, that's that will work. Check things. All right, that's it for me. Um, thanks. You can follow me on Twitter, by the way, uh, if you want. And I'm just Peter Birkenbosch on GitHub and almost everywhere else. So thanks, everybody.